first, just first and foremost, man, um, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for, you know, being on. Um, first question I like to ask, just to, you know, always get the interview started. Uh, who is Romala Scott? Uh, Romala Scott is a self-made entrepreneur. Um, he's I'm from New Orleans. I now live in Los Angeles. I'm 26 years old. Um, I've worked with big brands such as Black Pyramid. Um, I've worked through Dope to do my own clothing brand, The Genuine Club. Um, you know, I'm an event director and a, a brand owner. Okay, okay, bet. So, growing up in New Orleans, um, that's where you were originally from, right? Yes. What was, like, what originally attracted you, like, to the entertainment industry? Um, I think just being really popular as a kid. Like, growing up, I was, since I can remember, like, four or five years old, I was always popular. I was always outgoing, energetic, so... I've always wanted to do more. Like, I used to just overly draw in class. I used to um, want to be in little acts, you know, playing sports. I always wanted to be, like, the best person or the most known person. Um, so just the attention. Um, then it, it led to me throwing my own club events. It led, because, you know, you could turn popularity into money. Right. Throw parties. So it led to me throwing, you know, it led to me throwing parties because I'm popular. And then I was popular. And then, um, then that led to fashion was really just a really a random thing, um, you know, because of, it was really more so because I always wanted to model and I always did little modeling gigs. But when Nick and Dan, when Nick Nick Paddywhack and Dan Rue introduced me to Black Pyramid and the, one of the main people named Peter in Black Pyramid, once he introduced me to Chris Brown, then that kind of like made me really want to get into fashion okay so so basically fashion was kind of like a branch of your grind or was it something that you were like always interested in even like when you were still in new orleans yeah 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 it's, it, it was just, it's just a branch um everything i do as of now is just a branch of my grind i can't i would never really say i'm stuck to doing one thing i'm just uh, um i'm just like the ultimate entrepreneur per se like i'm I can do anything and anything I put my mind to I'm good at just as you or anybody else would be if y'all wanted to do something right so when you were in New Orleans did you start throwing parties there yeah I, I only throw my parties in New Orleans um purposely um, okay I was 18 I started promoting and then when I was turned 21 I started to do it by myself and um I, I have people from different states. Uh, I live in L.A., so I have people in L.A. who want me to throw parties here. I have people in Texas who want me to throw parties there, but I keep it my one hell of a night, my tag. I keep that in New Orleans. Now, I do do hostings in different cities. I do host Playhouse from time to time in Los Angeles. I do do AOD. Um, I go to different venues and host these clubs, but my own personal event that hits home is at home in New Orleans. All right, so how'd you get started into that? Like you saying, being like a popular, you know, kid growing up, just knowing people. How did you really get started? Because party promoting is a grind. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta start from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I was I was lucky. Um, my my great friend, I would say he's family. His name is Larry Moreau. Um, he throws a lot of big events in New Orleans, and he's slightly older than me. He does stuff with Meek Mill, P Diddy. Um, he, every year he does something with Angela Yee from the Breakfast Club. Um, they do a, a joint birthday party together in New Orleans. Um, he kind of, he hit me up one day. We used to play basketball together and we grew up together. He just was two years older than me. So he kind of told me, hey, bro, you need to put your popularity, turn it into money. I'm going to have you promote for me for this, this club called The Hookah. It was called The Hookah in New Orleans. Um, I started promoting. He was giving me like $100 a week, $200 a week. I thought that was cool. I was 18. And then after some years, he kind of told me, okay, you know a lot. And you have your own wave. I'm not going to try to feed off of your wave. Um, you could do it yourself. Try it out. I, I remember this. The first night, I did it with two of my friends. Like, I wanted, my, I was scared to do it myself. Had two of my friends do it with me, it did good. They didn't 
didn't put in as much work as I did. So I took them off the night, the following Friday. I <laughs> flopped. Nobody. Completely flopped. Then from there, I told myself I'll never flop again. The next week, I did the biggest party to this date of my young life. Like, I had over 1,100 people there. It was packed. It was so big that everybody couldn't fit inside the club. So it was like half the party inside, half the party outside on the street. Oh, okay. All right. So, was that like your best experience that night? Um, I think that's top two because that's top two. That was my most my most glorified glorified one. Um, that one really means a lot means a lot to me because that's the first thing I did solely by myself that did great. But my favorite one would be. One hell of a night, excuse me, sorry. One hell of a night um, this past year, last November. That party was, that event was freaking crazy in New Orleans. Um, you know, I got to fly my girl at the time, my girlfriend out from Florida, her friends, my friends, some people from LA, we all went to New Orleans. Then the whole city was just ready. It was like, it was like a holiday. Everybody was ready for that one party in particular. And that went crazy, that, that went crazy. Man, okay. My, and I, I do want to mention, I, I do want to mention this. My other favorite one, my last one, was two years ago when I started working with Black Pyramid, simply because Black Pyramid sponsored my events at the time. So I got to give out gear, Black Pyramid clothes to like I, I, I stand on the stage and I used to throw the shirts in the crowd. Then the video recorded of my birthday party, Chris Brown reposted it. He posted it on his main page, which he posted me many a times. But this particular time, he posted my party. Right. So talking about how Black Pyramid, you know, Black Pyramid promotes diversity, uh, youth, how fun it is. That made my party get like I got way more attention from him posting it. Of course. Okay. So, like, what was the like? What made you move to LA? Like, how did you go from transition from New Orleans to now I'm in LA? Right, I'm going to give you two quick uh, summaries. The most professional one would say business opportunity, you know, uh, new scenery. I just wanted like, a, um, I wanted to be more motivated and I wanted to be around people with more money, more everything that would motivate me. That's the professional answer. Uh, reality would be more so, I was talking to this female and she lives in LA and I came here for my birthday we kicked it for two weeks, and then she just was like, I want you to live here. I want you to be around me more. And then she told me, you know, the opportunity and this and that. And then I moved to L.A. two months later. Like, yeah. literally just up and moved. All right. Hey, that's what it is. All right. So, um, <laughs> so now you in L.A. Um, how did you get LinkedIn? I know you had worked originally with, uh, or you still work with them. With uh, Dan Rue and uh, Nick Knack Paddywhack, how did how did that relationship you know build? That relationship built in New Orleans. Me and Nick been friends since we were seventeen. Oh, my mom, my mom, going off. Let me turn it off. Uh, we um we been friends since we were seventeen. Um, we and I'm twenty six, so we're going going on twenty seven. We're going on ten years of friendship. We knew each other since freaking Facebook days. Transitioned to Twitter before Instagram blew up. So we always been genuine, real friends. Like used to sleep over each other's houses in the summer. Like I sleep by his mom's house, he sleep by mine. Um, Dan, we became friends about three years ago cause he was living with Nick at the time. And uh, I went to Nick's house to play Madden and Dan was like, oh, I could beat you. I'm like, who is this little white dude beating Madden? <laughs> so then we played, you know, that's what I'm thinking. And he has an attitude problem. So as he was yelling all in my face and shit. We, was, we have, which we'll never release, but we have a video of us, like, literally about the fight. Nick was recording thinking it was so funny. Um, me and Dan just going at it. Um, but, because he owed me money, because I paid him out $500. And Damn. he was to me my money. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm just like, you know, you know, like, I can't say what was said, but at the end of the story, I got my money within, like, five minutes, so it's no big deal. But, um... Yeah, we just became friends. That's how you know, guys, we become friends. We cross over basketball, football, video games, and we become friends. So then I moved 
um, shortly after that, to LA by myself for like five months. They blew up. When they blew up, they wanted to move too. They moved and we all got crib together for the last two years. We recently just all moved away from each other. But we all live in the same neighborhood. We live within like four minutes of each other. He, Nick has a house, Dan has his own apartment, I have my own apartment. Okay, bet. So, um, you said y'all play Madden, like, y'all, you still on the Madden right now? Man, what, yes, uh, I don't do the whole, I do, like, Madden real online and real team. Dan and Nick both do, like, my team on Madden. I don't like, like the my like, team, man. I don't like, like that shit neither. And they do my play on 2K. I don't like all that. I like the original, we play head up with real team. Yeah, so you online? What's that head to head online? Yeah, you you on what system do you play? I play Xbox. Ah, uh, see, I'm PS4. I was gonna say that next, man. You know, we could we could. Uh... See you stuck on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the phone, man. You got you got hop on the phone. You need to send me your information. Send me your information, and I'll go buy a PS4 this weekend just to play you. I man. Swear. Man, bro, hey, I get it though, man. You know, you know, there's rankings, man. You know, I'm like top five, five thousand in the world, man. man you you know? could be top anything. You you could be top anything you want to. You saw the wars were what seventy two and nine or something, and they lost the finals. So that don't mean nothing. <laughs> nah, that's real. <laughs> now we go. I'm, I'm gonna see you on info. All right, so um, like, so now you, you know, what I'm saying, y'all in LA, y'all doing your thing. You said yo, 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 basically your brother from. From childhood, he blow up. How does that transition you to now, y'all? Now you linked up with Chris Brown and you become a brand ambassador for uh, Black Pyramid. Uh, that's that's because Dan and Nick they knew um they knew of me being a a big they knew I was like a um big Chris Brown fan. Uh huh. Like growing up, Nick knew this. Nick knew this. So um. When the opportunity came and it presented itself, they had a host of uh, Black Pyramid pop up shops in New Orleans. Because when Chris goes on tour, he does the, he used to do the pop up shops. So, so um, at the time, they brought me to the pop up shop. They introduced me to Peter. Peter just he said he liked my vibe. He just felt like I was a real person. Which all of this adds up to why I call myself the Genuine Club because everybody always says I'm a genuine guy. Like I don't. You know, never used anybody. I never asked for anything. Um, I'm very thankful for everything. So that's kind of why I call myself the Genuine Club. But back to that story. Um, they linked me with Peter Paul. Peter Paul said he liked my vibe. Peter asked me, hey, you want to come to the concert? You know, I got floor seats. All of us going. I was like, let's go. Because I didn't plan on going to the concert. I actually was going to Panama for my younger friend's spring break. And I was like, uh, like we had to leave at like, one in the morning, and I'm like, ah, all right, we can go to the concert. So I went, and um, Peter was like, hey, I'm going to bring you backstage. Take this jacket. It was a Black Pyramid original, uh, I still have it, jacket. We go backstage, he was like, I'm going to let you talk to Chris. I was like, all right, cool. Now, mind you, we I had drinks at the, at the, at the New Orleans uh, Arena, at the Smoothie King Center. So I'm drunk at this point, and I'm drunk, and I'm tired, because, like, when he said, I'm going to let you talk to Chris, it had to be like 10.30. I sat in a room from 10.30 to like 12.30, two hours, waiting for Chris. We had our first, uh, one of our pictures, um, I posted on my Instagram. Like, I'm, he's smiling. I'm not. Like, I, I look tired. Like, I was done. But he came back there. He signed my jacket. Chris Brown with Mavis Scott, blah, blah, blah. Then he, um... We talked for a few minutes about fashion. He re- he noticed me because he coached me on his Instagram prior to that because I was always wearing Black Pyramid prior to working with him. Um, and he just told Peter to stay in touch with me. And from there, Peter Paul stayed in touch with me, and Peter kind of took me under his wing for Black Pyramid. And I worked alongside him for the most part for the last two years. I got to actually uh, go on the first few tour dates of Hard Work on the Full Moon last year. Okay. And up with the pop-up shops and... You know, so it's very fun. It's very fun. All right. Now, funny story. So, I personally, I rock the brand, too. You know what I'm saying? For It's been a few years since it came out. You know, I go to my my local store, and I saw the clothes, and I didn't even know it was Chris Brown line. I just liked it. So, I bought, like, the Letterman jacket. It's like a, um, you know, the, you know, the long, uh rain joint the rain jacket with the black pyramid it got like the uh the reflector on the front so like i buy like a lot of the stuff 
So I realize that I feel like it's a lot of symbolism of like black power, black greatness behind like the name and the design and just the overall brand logo, everything. Do you know, like, was that something that was done on purpose or is, am I just like kind of like overly reading into it? No, you're a hundred percent right. He's big on um, black power. He's big on self empowerment. He's big on like signs and stars and symbols. So what you just said is spot on with what it, it comes from. Yeah, cause that's that's I really like it, and you know, in Chicago, it's funny. Like the pyramid is like a, you know, it's a lot of gangs in Chicago, so the pyramid is like a symbol of one of the gangs. So every time I wear the jacket. People be looking at me like it's the it's the black on black letterman. So people be looking at me like, man, what's that? And I'll be trying to tell them like, bro, this a this like a real clothing line because you know people in Chicago they make their own clothes with the symbols and stuff. So it's actually a real that the letterman specifically it's a real popular jacket in Chicago, or uh, the Black Pyramid letterman. Um, but another funny story. So this was what like. Over this past weekend, so I'm I'm actually rocking. I was rocking the rain joint. Um, it got like the orange hood. It's blue with the orange hood. Say Black Pyramid on the front with the reflector. Yeah. So I'm in the elevator and somebody asked me. They like, man, what's like, what's that? It was a lady. She had a probably like a ten year old son. Um, I don't know if he saw the jacket and it said something to her, but she asked me about it. I guess because she wanted to get him some clothes. So I told him like, yeah, you know. This Chris Brown thing, you know, is 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 raw though. Like the clothes is raw, but it is also his line. So she like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool, man, bro. Tell, I promise you not. Like, word to God, bro. Fifteen minutes later, man, I get a text like, hey, man, I, I want you to talk to this guy, and it was it was you. So that's that's kind of like a, a funny story that like okay. literally, <laughs> literally, I was wearing the clothes when I got the text, and somebody had just asked me about it. So, um, yeah, that was cool, but that's how, you, that's how the universe works, man, for real. And that's that's crazy. So, um, I know you got a new clothing line. Like, do you still work with Black Pyramid, or did you kind of like transition to? Um, I, I, I'm still a, <coughs> excuse me, kind of I'm still associated with them tough. Um, me and Peter Paul talk very often. Um, they they put people in their camp rock my clothes, right? Um, but I'm not under them anymore but it's not like i left them under them and it's like tension or animosity it's more so they're proud of me they push me to do my own thing so right i'm like, still close with all of them uh, chris considering like what two weeks in la you got like three of them i'll be at them like you know we all good yeah it's like you graduated yeah, I graduated, right? And the teachers want you to do better and move on to the next step. That's exactly what it is. Nah, that's dope, bro. So, I was reading about your, your new line. Um, is it the genuine club? Because I saw it was like, Laveri was it Laveritable? Is that genuine? Yeah, you see, it's, uh, it's, it was Laveritable Club. Laveritable, it actually means the genuine club. Um, I'm from New Orleans, so we have a French background. So, I went with my roots, and I, I didn't want to just say the genuine club. That sounds like too claim to me. I mm -hmm. want to, you know, spice it up, I guess. So, Lave Tough Club, um, but I'm actually rebranding um, as of today, actually, um, because I learned that um, I was talking to this girl that's French, and she said in America, you could say Lave, Lave Tough Club, and it means the genuine club, but in, other, in France and Sweden and stuff, you have to put La Club Vey Tough. So you have to put club before they tub, so it means the genuine club. So it's like look, love they tub. So that's just a rebrand that I'm doing today, as of today. But um, overall, yes, it's the genuine club. Um, like I said, I came from people just always telling me I was genuine. So now I just stick to that. And you know, we all want to wear things that make us feel a part of something like BBC, the Unit Boys Club. Like it made you feel cool because you're like, oh, I'm part of BBC. Like this is the Leatherman. This is that. So that's what I'm doing also. Okay, bet. So what's the direction? Like, what's the overall direction of the line? Is it like streetwear? Um, like is everything. it like... Um, it, yeah, streetwear. It's, it's, it's streetwear. Um, I want to expand slightly. Um, I just did another radio interview, and a guy kind of gave me a good idea with doing purses. Um, I want to do backpacks next year uh, for kids. Um, 
It's going to be children. Men, right now it's men's, women's, and kids. But it's going to remain that. Um, and I also want to dip and dab in like little other things. Like girls be having little cute puppies. I might make puppies from little stuff. You know, just there's no limitations to fashion. So, or right. music. So. Right. Hey, one, one thing if I can throw it in, man. Men's designer shoes. I like I like I like shoes and I feel like we missing that whole segment man. You know it's a few people that's out here making like high quality shoes but really man if it ain't Gucci or Balenciaga or something like that it's sneakers, you know what I'm saying? And I that's that's one thing like if I know if I could, you know, I don't really got the fashion thing but I'm like, man, I wish we could make, like, sh somebody had, like, shoes and belts. Like, the type, you know what, how guys like to dress, you know what I'm saying? So, I know that's one thing I was like. Yeah, I, I would do belts, shoes. I would definitely do belts. I could see myself rocking the belts. Shoes is kind of hard because, like you said, there's already a market, and it's kind of hard to, like, start your own shoes, even with your own line. Mm -hmm. What I would do is, um, what I would do is, like, possibly try a collaboration with, like Jordan Warren's, how Ben Simmons just released his ones. Uh, my friend Arthur Millette, who plays for the New York Jets, he's releasing his own pair of Jordan Warren's, um, his own brand, his shoes. So I would do like a genuine club, a genuine club collab. Jordan One collaboration release. You know? Yeah, now nah, I know. Hey, what's that dude? He a bite? He a BMX guy? I think his name Reggie. Did you see the ones he dropped? They was like they look beat up already when you buy them. No, but uh, they don't. Yeah, they dope, bro. It's like, like I like them. They dope. It's like an off white. They look like you bought some all white ones, like the Jordan ones, and then you just scuffed them up, beat them up, but they they like aged all like pretty Wait. evenly. Yeah, yeah. That's I like I like shoes that was more so look like that. So I'm gonna look into that. Like Vans and Chucks and stuff. Like they don't look bad to me when they're worn. Oh, ones, my ones look worn. Like that's 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 dope to me. Yeah, that shit hard, man. That shit hard. So, um, like, what what are like some big plans that you have? Just overall, I know you said, man, you're an entrepreneur. You know, a hustler, fashion. You into a lot of things. You, you know, you put deals together for your friends. Like, what are some big plans that you have? Like, moving forward, say, like five years from now, where do you see yourself? Real estate. Um, I see myself going back to New Orleans not to live. Well, I go back often now, but I see myself going there more and um, investing into my neighborhood, my my city. Um, I, not saying I could change the whole city by myself, but, you know, opening up a few businesses, opening up my own clothing brand store, giving people jobs, um, opening up, like, car washes, anything that would help my mom retire comfortably, like, Cause she run help. She helps runs a casino in Louisiana, so I want her to run my businesses for me and not have to stress keep it in the family. So I see myself opening up a restaurant, opening up my own clothing store, opening up a few other businesses, um, investing with my friends. But I like to invest my money because your money sitting in the bank doesn't make you money. Sitting in your pocket doesn't make you money. So I like to put my money in. I mean, sometimes it's a bad investment, but I like taking chances. Okay, bet, bet. Um, and real quick, man, so before we get out of here, man, I just wanna I wanna talk to you about, you know, my brand is Street Certified News, man, and one of the biggest things with, you know, uh just the streets, man, and just really coming up without say uh the the umbrella of a corporate job or a, you know, a, a, a actual uh, situation where okay I work this job I get this check man I want you to talk about bro like just the 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 vibes of some people see your grind and some people see your hustle and it's like they salute it but it's always those groups of people that for some reason and it be the ones that know you that's the crazy thing it's like they it's hard for them to accept your success even though they know, you know, kind of what you've been through, and you always get with with these big, with these big blessings and these big projects and all these things coming your way positive, it's always that negative energy that seems to kind of come from people that's pretty close to you. Like I want, I want, I want you to talk about that. Like, like how are you able to deal with 
that? Um, I deal. I, I deal with that often. Um, I deal with envious people very often. People around me. Um, you think people are there for you? They're not because they feel like the reason I feel like that is is because people around you feel like they know you so well and they feel like they deserve what you have. Like, oh, we went to the same school or we played on the same team or we, you know, we do the same thing. Why am I not in his position? And the answer to that is because they think that way. That's why they're not in that position. You're not supposed to think, why am I not in that position? Why is this not me? You're supposed to just go and do it. Like, what's meant for you will be for you. You just have to manifest it, talk about it, speak into existence. And focus on yourself. Focusing mm. on the next man's pocket is not going to make you rich. Mm. Man, that's a hey, that's a hundred, bro. I just I know, you know what I'm saying? That it, it happens to me. I I'm sure it happens to everybody. And it seems like it always comes from them people that's like like you said, man, you went to school with them, you know, that's my homie. I know him. And it's like it it, it always comes from that, that direction. Um also, man, so you hoop, right? Yeah, I hoop. I, hoop. I, uh, I play basketball weekly. Um, as of two weeks ago, I started playing basketball a lot with Trace Holmes, well, against him. Like, it's his team versus my team every day in the gym. We guard each other. Um, he rocks my hat. He put my hat on his Instagram story last week. He hit me with a follow. Um, I actually have to hoop today at 9.30 p.m. We're going to hoop tonight. Late night session, private. All right, so you, like, you dropping buckets. Like, you, or what you, you assist man? What you oh, no, play I, defense? I, I, I I'm a hustler, like, from from clothes to basket to the court. Like, I hustle, I get um, hustle points, not, like, trash points, but I hustle. Um, I'm also a great shooter. I'm a defender. I'm going to be in your face, and I'm a great shooter. Like, they didn't even train them to even knock a ball like that. Like, when I when I balled on them, it was like, I thought you was into fashion. Like, I, didn't, I'm like, I thought you was a singer. I didn't know you <laughs> Like, we both was going at it. All right, so what's the most what's the most you dropped on, bro, man? How, how, what's the what's the best uh, uh, stat line you put on them? I can say this right now. This happened. What today? So today is Monday, I think. All right, so Wednesday, last Wednesday, we we're going to a game of thirteen. His five versus my five. I went. You know, in street ball, three pointers are two pointers, two pointers are one pointers. Right. They're going to thirteen. Right. So I dropped. I hit. I hit five out of six three pointers. So that's ten points. My team lost 11 to 13, but I scored 10 points, five out of six three pointers, all in his face, all in his shit. But he did. He walked up the court, half court, and just pulled a three in my face from half court, and that was a game shot. But it was trash because it was glass, and he didn't call it. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> he got the upper hand on Yeah, he, he hit it and walked away. I was like, nigga, take that out. And I'm like, that was all glass. You didn't even call that shit. But, <laughs> he did a, that's that like, Steph Curry, man. He did that Steph Curry on you, man. That's bullshit. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, well, hey, man, hey, you know what I'm saying? Before we get out of here, man, it was, it was good talking to you, man. I want you to drop, you know what I'm saying, your social media, your website, ways that people can get in touch with you, get in touch with the brand. I got you. Uh, my Twitter and my Instagram is the same thing. It's my first and last name, Romalis Scott. So it's R-O-M-A-L-I-S-S-C-O-T-T. And my... My website, personally, my personal website is romalescott.com. So that's my three um, handles online. Okay, and then uh, is there a way that people can get the clothes online? Like, how do we get your clothes? Oh, yeah. Okay, so so the only dilemma with that is as of two or three weeks ago, I had to take my website down for maintenance, and I want to create a, a, a more broad, bigger website. I'm in the works of that. It'll be done in the next week. Um, that takes a little time, but... People can always. I have my brand page in my in my Instagram bio. They can always just DM the brand. Um, I have somebody who will immediately reply to them, and you know they do PayPal, Cash App, anything, and it's all you know 100 percent legit, clearly. But in the next week, the official website will be back up. Hey man, bet bet, bro. So hey man, I wish all the continued success, man. Um, you know what I'm saying. I appreciate talking to you, man. And just for everybody who's listening, you know what I'm saying? We just, you know what I'm saying, had a nice little convo with uh, Romala Scott, man. Appreciate, I appreciate you, bro.
I appreciate you. Go follow me on the gram and hit me up. Yeah, I'm gonna follow you, man. I'm gonna give you my uh my PlayStation uh network info too, man, because you know anybody who say you know most people on 2K I don't play 2K. Anybody who say they a Madden a Maddenier, man, I gotta see him, man. I gotta see him on that Madden, man. Hit me on both. I got you. Just hit me up. All right, bro. Nice talking to you, man. All right, bro. Have a great day. All right, you too.